G'day there. You're watching the Aussie BIM Guru. Today I've got a bit of a different video um, compared to my usual video tutorials. So I'm going to cover today the pros and the cons of being a BIM manager. Um, specifically, I'm going to cover the, the 10 pros and cons and some solutions to them. Because I've been getting quite a lot of questions from my followers about um, how to become a BIM manager, what it's like, general advice. So I want to start making some videos that relate to the job because I think it's really important to share what I think is good insight. So I guess um, I'll start off by saying that as a BIM manager, there's a lot of pros and a lot of cons. Um, there's good things, there's bad things. There's good days and there's bad days. It really depends. Um, and I guess BIM management's a really challenging role because it's very gray. There's so many things that can be interpreted different ways, um, so many ways of doing things, so many problems and cultural things you need to overcome. Um, so I'm gonna try and cover those in this video. Um, and I guess it's important to say that, you know, if you wanna be a BIM manager, you have to be very innovative and you have to think outside the box all the time. So if you're looking into BIM management, just make sure this is sort of part of how you approach every problem. Um, I've had a few people asking me, you know, what the most important thing is, I think, as a BIM manager. And I think this is one of them. You have to be creative. So without further ado, I'll jump into the list. Um, so in no particular order, the first pro of being a BIM manager, in my opinion, or one of the best things, is that you get to manage. Um, you get to decide uh, on key decisions for the company. And over time, you'll gain the trust of the company you work for. Um, obviously, this is something that can take a while to obtain. Um, but because technology is a more new thing in the industry, one of the great things is that you can be quite young. Um, I'm only 30. I started BIM managing when I was about 25. So I was really lucky to get into a management role that early on. So age is really just a number. <clears throat> um, but one of the cons that comes with this, and this is one that a lot of BIM managers won't tell you, but I think it's true in a lot of cases. Um, when you have this level of expertise, um, you will become quite isolated because not many people understand what you do. Um, you work with a lot of advanced things, you're thinking quite far ahead and you can become really isolated from the people you work with. So that can be really challenging um, and it can really take a toll on your personality. So it's really important to try and avoid this where possible. Um, and I guess my advice to anyone in this situation is just to encourage growth in the people around you. Um, try not to just focus on your own personal growth as a BIM manager, um, but try to make your, what you do more approachable. So if you're coding, for example, try to teach other people to code as well. Um, another pro, which is again really important is that you are a mentor and you're also a problem solver. So you're helping other people as part of your job. Um, you're not just trying to make your day easier, you're really making everyone else's day easy as well. But one of the cons that comes with this, and a lot of people take this really personally, is that people will leave the companies you work for. And usually it's not your fault. It's not usually people leaving for BIM, it's people leaving because maybe there's uh, better opportunities elsewhere from a business perspective. Maybe the business is going through a slow period. Um, so don't take it personally. And it's really hard when you put a lot of time and investment into someone and then they leave to go somewhere else. Cause you know, you've, you've put a lot of time into their, their growth. So it's hard not to really take that on board. Um, and I guess the solution to that is to try to share your time as evenly as possible in the company you work with. So try not to pick favorites or put too much bias into one person which is really hard to do because sometimes people are more interested than, than others. And the tendency is to try to just focus on the ones that are interested, whereas sometimes with a little bit more work, you can actually get interest out of other people that maybe you didn't realize at first could do some of the things they can. So that's really important. <clears throat> so another pro um, that a lot of people ask me about, and I will be honest, um, the salary potential is very high. You can make a lot of money in BIM management. If you're a good negotiator and you know what you're worth, you can ask for a lot of money. Um, obviously don't ask for ridiculous salaries because they'll laugh at you and you won't get a job. Um, but don't undervalue your services. Do a lot of research as to what a fair salary is in your country. Um, I won't tell you what I'm on or what other people are on, um, but do your research and understand that typically you will get paid more than most people that you know that aren't working in BIM management, but in architecture. But a con that comes with this is that BIM management is really the end of the line in a career pathway. What comes after BIM management in that career pathway is very unclear. Typically, you might be a national BIM manager. From there, there's no way really to grow. Um, so really, your growth pathways are never really that well defined in the company you work for. Um, you'll find that your job description is very open-ended. Um, you might do a lot of things outside your job description. So that can make it really hard because if you're, say, 25 like I was in BIM management, um, where do you see yourself in 15 years time? Hmm, it's tricky. Um, you may not even see yourself in that company, that role, that industry. 
it's it's very hard and you've always got to stay really focused on what your next step is but a solution to that is also to communicate with the people around you and make sure that they're aware of your goals let's say in five years time you want to learn to code in python make sure your company is aware of that and they might find the opportunity to give you time to do it or give you the means to do it like a training course and also set um, key performance indicators so let your company know how they should measure your success because they probably don't understand your role very well as a BIM manager. It's important that they have ways to understand that you're setting the goals and meeting the goals that you're setting for yourself because they want you to grow as well, even if they don't quite understand your role. So the fourth pro is that every day is different. Um, BIM management is a highly dynamic job. Um, there's gonna be different problems all the time different people, different projects, and, and different problems, different solutions. So I find this is what makes the job really great because you're always doing something different every day. It's not like a, like a retail job where day in, day out, you're serving customers. It's very different. <clears throat> but one of the cons is that because you're so good at solving so many complex problems, it's very easy to get stuck on complex projects because they'll need you on them and they'll want the person that can do things the fastest because then they can save the most money. <clears throat> so you've got to be really careful in BIM management that you don't get locked into projects. A lot of the jobs that I've left in the past are because the companies I've been on have locked me onto projects or I've locked myself onto projects by being careless. So you've got to be really mindful of that in BIM management because you're more effective at a strategic level in the company typically. <clears throat> and a solution to this as well is to try and delegate your workload. So to share your workload with other people and that's also really important because how else are they going to learn if they never get the opportunity? So one thing I, I constantly try to do in my job is to let manager know, managers know when there's opportunities for other people to do what they're asking me to do so they can learn. That's really important. But de delegate fairly. Um, don't be a dumper. So don't dump work on people and walk away. Um, that's one of the worst ways to manage in my opinion. And I see it all too often. Even sometimes with BIM managers I've worked with, um, some of them are dumpers. Some of them will just drop a, drop a task, walk away, and it's your problem. Um, that's not a good way to do it. It builds bad culture and eventually people leave the company. So always delegate fairly. <clears throat> so one of my favorite pros is you get to research and innovate a lot. You have to be careful that you don't spend all your time researching. You do have to do project work as well sometimes. But I guess it's expected that the BIM manager should be one of the most creative people when it comes to software in the company. So you're always gonna be expected to be trying out new things, um, meeting new people that have new techniques to show you and things that you can bring to the projects you work on. <clears throat> but I guess a con that comes with this, and this one's really common in BIM management, is people won't understand what you're doing. Um, from a distance, people might even think you look a little bit crazy because <laughs> you're gonna be talking about very complex, very abstract things that you do on a day-to-day -day basis. And sometimes they won't understand what you're doing until they see the result. Even then, maybe they still won't understand how you got there. So it's really important that you try to, um, I guess, communicate. I'll, I'll go over that in a sec. Um, but another con is that even if they don't understand what you're doing, um, it's still your fault that BIM is the what it is. There's a lot of people that are very traditional in how they work, and they'll always associate you with the reason why Revit came and took away what they do. So you've got to be careful that you don't rub people the wrong way who used to have a lot more power in the design process, um, but because they don't use the tools, they've lost a lot of power. So it, it's hard to mediate those situations. A solution to this is to try to communicate with everyone, um, not just the people that are your age, not just the people that are in technical roles, try to communicate with management as well. Um, I make it a, an effort in my jobs to always talk to managers whenever I can or whenever suits them. And I try to talk to them in the same way I talk to someone else. I don't like to, you know, change the way I talk to a manager just because they're they're older or they don't know how a piece of software works. So I try to make sure that the way I, I talk to people works for everyone. And try not to use too much jargon. So jargon's just words that, you know, are, are very confusing or abstract or may only make sense to the experts. Try to break down what you say so that people understand what you're trying to tell them. Because um, a big part of BIM management is actually communication. <clears throat> Um, one of the pros of being in BIM management is software and technology vendors will talk to you quite regularly. Um, I get a lot of them reaching out to me, but one of the bad things about this is that vendors will talk to you. <laughs> You'll get a lot. Um, too many, if anything. I get a lot of outsourcers and people that are selling me quite redundant software sometimes or trying to sell me the idea. Um, and some of them just will not go away. They're very pushy sometimes. So you really need to develop the ability to say no and to be forceful with your answers. 
Um, I've become very good at saying no very clearly um, because of vendors coming to me. But don't get me wrong, some vendors are brilliant. Some of them will give amazing ideas to me. Um, some that I wish I could bring to my company straight away. Um, obviously, you need to build business cases to bring software into your company. But keep in mind that it is something that will happen in BIM management. <clears throat> Uh, one of the pros, one of my favorite ones, is BIM has a very bright future. It's changed how we approach our industry, and whatever comes after BIM, um, I have no doubt that I'll be doing that as well. Um, so it's the forefront of how we deliver, and it's going to continue to be for quite a while. So if you're in BIM, you've got a bright future as well. <clears throat> but one of the hard parts is it's moving and it's changing very quickly. So a lot of new software comes out all the time, new workflow, software gets replaced with newer software, it's hard to keep up. So um, one way to sort of work around this is to network. So one thing I've done is really put a lot of effort into my LinkedIn network. And now I have a lot of contacts that know things that I don't know. So I can actually call on them for very high level advice if I have a need. Um, I, I don't know Python that well, for example. I know a little bit, but if I need to know a specific answer to something, I have people I can go to that can give me pretty specific answers. Um, so it's really powerful to build a network if you're gonna be a BIM manager. <clears throat> Um, another pro, and we're almost at the end, is that you have a lot of influence over your officer standards. So this can be technical standards, workflows, quality management system, uh, just the way you model, the way you deliver, and the way you design. So it's a very powerful role if you go about it the right way. <clears throat> but one of the cons, and it happens nearly everywhere, is that you become Mr. or Mrs. Fixit. <laughs> so you'll end up doing a lot of jobs that aren't really BIM management. These might be things like managing the filing system of your company, managing the quality management system where it doesn't relate to BIM, um, or even just you know managing IT, which is always a big issue because you really need to focus on what you can't, what you can do, and others can't, because that's what you're there to do. So if you already have an IT manager, don't be an IT manager. So the way around this, I guess, is to be really good at doing what I call reverse management. So this is saying no to people in a way where you're not just forcefully turning around and saying, go away. Um, you, you become better at saying things like, listen, this I could do this, but X person over here can actually do it faster than me, and they'll be free in an hour. So I recommend you go to them, and I'll be working on this in the meantime. If it becomes really bad, let me know. So there's, there's ways you can go about communicating and sort of shoving people away a little bit, but not too forcefully to the point where it's rude. So definitely get good at reverse managing people when they're trying to overmanage you to do something that's not your job. Um, the ninth pro is that you get to work on very complicated projects. Um, so some people aren't very lucky in this industry. They work on very basic, very repetitive projects because they don't innovate on their skill set. So they don't really get given the chance to work on more complicated things because they don't have that skill set. But as a BIM manager, we develop quite complicated skills in how we deliver. And this is one of the benefits we get. <clears throat> but one of the cons is that sometimes projects are complex, but not for a good reason. Maybe lots of people have left the company on the project and you're the only person left that has any history of how it was set up. Um, maybe it's just a project no one wants to work on and it's too complicated. No one knows how to run the software on the project and you're stuck with it. Or maybe it's just a project where they need it to be delivered so quickly that they can't put anyone else on it because they won't get it done in time. So that is one of the big cons of being a BIM manager. You become a bit of a, a bit of a spot fix. One of the solutions is to prevent these problems before they become problems. So if you can get involved in the resourcing in your company, you, you can essentially stop these becoming issues because you'll see them before they're, they're problems. And a lot of other people won't realize they're gonna become problems because they don't know how long these things take. For example, if you've got a project that has a lot of documentation that needs to be set up and they don't resource this until the very last minute, chances are they might try to get you to come in and script it, um, as opposed to having people put on early enough that they can do it in time. <clears throat> and I guess the, the last pro, which is just a really general one, is that you really get to be challenged in BIM management. Um, it's not an easy job, but that's really the rewarding part. Um, it's never boring and you always feel like you're learning something new or you're teaching someone else something new. <clears throat> and obviously, there's a lot of frustration that comes with that. Sometimes things don't work out. Sometimes people don't work with you the way that you wish they did. Um, so it can be frustrating, but at the end of the day, it's very rewarding. Um, there's a lot of positive experiences that I have as a BIM manager. Say like I've been working on a problem with someone for two weeks and it just hasn't worked, hasn't worked. And suddenly we get there and it works and everyone's happy and we go home on time. That's a big reward for me. So there's a lot of reward in the job. So I highly recommend people consider it. <clears throat> 
So thanks for watching, and I guess don't let this deter you from BIM management. Um, every job has its pros and cons, and I guess these are just some of the ones to be aware of. If you're considering going into BIM management, or maybe you weren't self-aware of these challenges when you're already a BIM manager. <clears throat> so thanks for watching today. Hopefully you found this interesting, and I'll probably do a few more of these in future. For example, um, how to become a BIM manager, which is a common question that I have asked. So um, thanks for watching today. Um, if you're not already following and subscribing, feel free to do so. And hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Take care. Bye.